All right, hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to take a bunch of DRM free videos and turn them into a Blu-ray movie you can watch on your Blu-ray player or your PS4 or whatever. Um, I tested one of these setups on my Xbox One, it didn't seem to work, but it should work on most Blu-ray players. Anyway, let's get started. So first you'll need some DRM free video files. I downloaded these Video Game High School Season 3 uh, video files, as you can see right here. Uh, that you can download them if you own it on like certain services. I got it on Vimeo from the Kickstarter campaign. Anyway, so we're going to use this as an example. Uh, the next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a program called this Multi AV CHD. It's 100% free, no free trial, no um, uh, limited features or anything. Just go ahead and start it up, but it does support donations. That's fine. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add our file. So just go ahead and click this. And as you see here, is just browse to whatever folder you want, and then you can either select one file if you want to make a Blu-ray from one file, or you can just select multiple to make a um, multi-track Blu-ray. Not multi-track, but you know what I mean, multi-video Blu-ray. So if you want to, you can take some really small like home videos or whatever and combine them all into one Blu-ray, or you can take multiple short films and combine them into one Blu-ray. It's up to you. All right. So now, if you see it red here, that probably means something needs to be changed. Uh, go ahead and click on any of the videos down here and it will take you to the settings panel. This may look intimidating at first, but it's really not. So if you want to add subtitles, just go ahead and click here, and then you can click add, and that will take you to where you are, and it supports a whole bunch of different subtitle formats. Um, if your video files don't show up, let me just show you that real quick. If you click add video files and they don't show up, they're probably in a different format. Click down here, and then you can pick between the different formats that supports like MKV, MPEG, and AVI, Flash. I'm not sure why you'd be using a Flash file, but you have multiple options. Since this is a Blu-ray disc, I could hold quite a few um, different individual videos at standard definition. But unfortunately, I believe you do need to have higher resolution for most Blu-ray players to play it. So I suggest going at least 720p. You can have an upscale of 720p by clicking the transcode button. This will let you change the actual settings for the video file. As you can see here, uh, it detected 720 by 480 and here's the default bitrate they're setting you to. So up here is where you see the detected settings. If for some reason it gives you the wrong information here, like your video file is actually not like that, you can click alter detected settings and that will actually let you manually change the information. If you're a new user, don't worry about that. If you're a new user, the first thing I say that you do is if your videos are already in 720p or whatever, just go ahead and click fit all. Well, this will automatically set all the fancy settings for you so you don't have to do it yourself. All right, so Destination Media. We're going to be using a Blu-ray, so we go down to uh, BD25. That means Blu-ray Disc 25. I don't think they have a setting for Blu-ray Disc, uh, for dual-layer Blu-rays, but this is for normal Blu-ray Discs. Also, you'll probably want to make sure you actually have a Blu-ray burner on your computer. For quality and speed, One Pass Insane should be okay, but to get the best video quality, or to get really good video quality, I say do One Pass fast. There is Two Pass, but that sometimes causes problems. <clears throat> anyway, uh, this setting says scale is 720p if you're using really low quality. That's fine because that would just make it look better overall for the instead of having a really low quality, high resolution. Uh, these settings you can leave alone unless you have a Vera TV. I don't know what that would be for. Um, <clears throat> if you have a video from a different language, you may want to use this option. It's called hard subtitles. That means the first subtitle track you put in will be burned into the video, so it can't be disabled. And you don't have to worry about you know enabling it every single time. All right, let's go ahead and press OK. As you can see, it's automatically set up. All these things turn green. So what happens here is, let's go ahead and go to click on Transcode. And it says, OK, oh, we're now set at 8 megabytes per second. And we're still at 720 by 480. Again, you can try um, setting this to resize to and then like 720p. I wouldn't take it up to 1080p, but regardless. All right, so that's what it looks like right now. Uh, OK, and we have. Let's go ahead and show you how to change the titles. So title name up here will say what the actual name of the file will be on your Blu-ray listing. Uh, if you want, you can just edit it here. And let's just take off all that nonsense. And then if you press OK, boom, and now list it as this. If you want to add a picture to the individual um, video file, like if you, I want to have pictures for all the episodes, just click here. And then it will take me to where I can search for in a JPEG image as my background picture or my poster image. Uh, after playback, you can make it play the next one. I can go, go to the next title so I can just play them all in a list. 
and if you want you can change the audio quality but the default setting again should be pretty good uh, if you don't have it by default it won't have your language typed in so you can type it in manually here or you can go to where is it I believe it's under here yeah so go to the, this tab subtitles and audio and say set undetected audio titles and subtitle ID 2 and type in a three letter language uh, three letter code for your language I believe English yeah English is ENG Spanish is like SPA I think or whatever um, you should know this if not you can probably just look it up online it's not important though it just helps for um, if your blu-ray players needs to know what audio type you're using for subtitles or whatever alright so you can go ahead and just do that with the rest of them do the same thing edit the title if you need it and add a poster image if you have one I'm not going to bother that with that and there you go if you want to add an extra audio track you can too so like if you have um, an English track which is not actually in your mp4 you can go ahead and click add here and add it in here it says audio files supports quite a few so if you want to have a separate audio track for like a different language that's fine like I said subtitles go here uh, chapters if you want to have chapter markers in your video for some reason I don't know if it detects chapter markers it's from all files especially if you have AVI click edit here and then just type in the chapter so this is hours so like if I wanted one hour um, 20 minutes 10 seconds and then you could just put zero zero here or you could be really really specific uh, you can probably look these up online if you if it's a really popular movie but you don't really need these chapter markers are completely optional all right so now let's go to um, DVD settings so our right, author first is what type of menu do you want you can have an X and B menu so it kind of looks like a PS3 slide menu or carousel menu well those don't help what do they actually look like if you go to settings, sorry, uh, where is it? If you go to, gotta find it again. Okay, here we go. If you go to menu and you click on main menu, you can actually preview what your menu will look like ahead of time. So you can see here, um, pretty basic, but gets the job done. This is just exactly what it will look like uh, for XMB menu. Let's go ahead and close this. Here's what slide menu will look like and main menu again these pictures would be filled in if you actually did the uh, poster images so you wouldn't have to look at those silly blue squares color you can change title you can change let's call this VGHS season 3 you can add a footer text the final season and then you can just add more lines if you want whatever you want and then smart line what you type in here does not matter you can type whatever you want and there's some color options we can make it green if we want so let's go ahead and preview it and here we go v VGHS season 3 and then we have the options you can use these buttons down here to switch between the different ones and here it says video game high school down here if you want to have more things like if you have chapter markers you can, might want to click here where it says chap, create chapter markers page that means you'll get let's just go ahead and show it a little option for chapters so you can turn all these things on or off if you want but they're not super important again if you don't have chapters or anything there's no point in even having an option for it alright so this is a very it's, it's not a super advanced program but it does give you a ton of options so all right, that should be enough to get you through the um, setup. So once you have all your stuff in, and once you've set up your menu, again, TV system's kind of important. You got NTSC or PAL based on whatever uh, region you're in or whatever type of TV you're playing on. So let's go ahead and preview this last thing. And there's Carousel. All right, so once you have all this in, you're technically good to go. You have your bitrate set up. <coughs> you said fill up the disk so as you see now even with all the settings up we're only up to 16 gigabytes so we should still have a tiny bit of space left on our disk but we're that's still fine all right you can skip the welcome menu that's defaultly on and there's a few other options too uh, oh yeah so if you want to have one thing in your list in whatever you go to preview it's showing like number three or whatever I'm not sure what it shows for me for the first one it should be number one so this is one last thing you want to keep in mind. Yeah, see here, showing episode two first. I don't want that. I want it to start at episode one. So what do I do? Go to media. Go to episode. Sorry if I'm talking really fast. Just 
post a comment if you have a question. Uh, go to show this title first. This will make sure that this will always be the first thing that shows up. Make sure you click OK also. Uh, main menu. And then go ahead and click. We'll go preview it and see. Here we go. Now we have episode number one is our first thing. All right. And we have auto fit here. See so it says auto fit, setting all the kilobytes per second. And it's changing the video format to a proper one. 640 by 360 is not a proper Blu-ray format, so it's changing it to 720 by 480. That's not a problem. All right, and that should be all we need. Once you have this program installed, which you should have done before you started watching this part of the tutorial, we'll go ahead and uh, create a project. So down here, you can choose which folder you want to be on. This is important, especially if you have one of your drives and was full if you're running off an SSD. Second thing you want to check is, where is it? Where your temporary folder is. Settings. So you want to set this folder here. You can click this button to change it where it is. Um, and you also want to set this button here. lets you change where the output will be. And then once you have both of those set up, you want output folder suffix. That means it will put this at the end of your output folder so you know which one you're actually looking at. This is especially helpful if you're using multiple projects. So we're going to mark this as BGHS, which means we'll make a folder called AVCHD VGHS. So we should be good to go. If you wanted to have a little bit more processing memory or whatever, or I don't know, processing power, but you can do threads to use. You can set this to higher, depending on how many cores you have. I'm going to say 16, which would be probably a two per core, so I have eight. And you can turn on 64-bit mode if you want. I haven't seen this make a huge difference, but you can if you want. Uh, MPEG-2 encoder, we're not using MPEG-2, so that shouldn't be a problem, I don't think. All right, so the rest of the settings you can just leave as default, and let's go ahead and start. If you want to save, like in case your program crashes or in case you want to edit this later, you can save your project and call it VGHS, why not? And then later on, if you come back and you want to make changes, go ahead and load it up. VGHS. All right, so the last two things. Um, if you want to be able to burn this to a disk easily, I would suggest you install IMG Burn. Uh, if you click here, then it will ask you to browse to IMG Burn. And once you have that set up, this will actually let you burn to a disk as soon as it's done making it. So you don't have to change any of the settings in IMG Burn. It will automatically set up for you. If you want to test your disk as soon as it's done, aka not burn it to a directly to a disk as soon as you're done, you can click Use IMG Burn ISO Mode. That will mean as soon as it's done, instead of getting it ready to burn to a disk, it will set you up to burn to save to an ISO image. From the ISO image, you can test it on your computer. You can make sure everything's good before, and then you can burn the ISO image to the disk. All right. So sorry if that's getting a little bit technical, but I'll show you what I mean. All right. So we're just going to use the ISO mode just so we can test it. Let's go ahead and click start. And it says temp folder is not empty. If you've run it before, it'll say temp folder is not empty. That's fine. Let's go ahead and click yes. We want to delete it. And then here are your many, many options. So if you want to do an HD DVD, um, three times DVD, I'm not sure what that's about. But anyway, uh, we're just going to use Blu-ray disc right here. Volume split, leave all this stuff alone. If you want to change like the setting it has up here, you can take off compilation name. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Blu-ray jacket picture, uh, you can leave that alone too if you want. It shows up a little picture on the Blu-ray when you put it in. Um, let's go ahead and click Blu-ray disc. And it will go ahead and start. It does the pre-processing first, and then it will actually start encoding, re-encoding your video. All right, and this will show the actual encoding screen, so you can see the actual progress. So far, we're at one percent, and as you can see right here. We have the actual VGHS um, first episode loaded up, and this is showing the current progress of encoding. We've got it this far in the video, and you actually get to see this little picture. Of pretend like people are actually watching it on their TV, so that's pretty fun. And there you go. Okay, so once this is done, you'll be able to save your ISO image or burn your disk. It will pop up whichever whatever one you want. And then you just go ahead and test it out. So, right, that's just about it. If you want to see the actual how to burn the disk um, ISO image, there are plenty of tutorials on showing you how to burn an ISO. Uh, if you want to test it out, I believe all you should have to do is just drag and drop the ISO into VLC. 
and then you can just run it through there or you can mount it virtually but yeah that's the basic steps so I might do a part two if it gets a little bit too complicated um, just let me know and I'll see you guys in the next video bye